Hi there and welcome to the Omaha Sports Insider Big Red Now special. I'm 3 News Now Sports Director Adam Kruger. And I'm Ben Stevens and we are very pleased to be joined tonight by the host of The Bottom Line on AM590, Michael Severe, a Nebraska football beat writer for the Omaha World Herald, Sam McEwen. Guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks Thank for asking us. All right, and guys, the Huskers are just three days away from kicking off the 2017 season against Arkansas State inside Memorial Stadium. And when the Big Red opens the 2017 campaign, and you will be doing so with a new starting quarterback under center in Tanner Lee. After transferring from Tulane, the junior signal caller set out last year, but is now ready to lead Nebraska into the new season. Continuing to improve on, you know, you know, our offense as a whole, you know, and kind of developing identity and, you know, um, finding out what we are, what we're good at and, you know, what we like to run and what we're confident in executing. And so just, just growing in that way is uh, just where we're headed. Nothing much rattles him. Guy's got talent, likes to work. Give us that every day. That's a beautiful thing. All right, Sam McEwen, from what you've seen at practice and what you've heard from Tanner, what impresses you about Lee's game and where do you think he still needs to improve? Well, I think there's, there's two things that are really impressive. And first of it's the physical traits, right? Mm -hmm. When he throws the ball, he knows where to throw it, he knows how to throw it, and he can make all the passes. And not every quarterback can do that. And I think that's important. I think the other thing that he's good at is he's won over his teammates over a short period of time. He's only been there for really a calendar year. And when he came in, he made relationships with the outgoing seniors, which was, which was smart. And he also made relationships on the scout team. And as a result, he was nominated and elected a captain before even having you know, played a game. And I think that's notable about his, not only his demeanor, but his potential and his ability. And I think wide receivers like him. Now, Michael, what have you seen out of Tanner's game that impresses you? He's fundamentally sound, everything he does. I mean, his, his feet are facing the right way. He throws over the top. He does everything that he's supposed to do. Um, my question is, of course, is going to be how mobile he can be when he's getting rushed. Will he be a guy that is worried about getting hit because he got hit so much at two lanes? Sometimes you get a little you know, shocked by that and you start panicking a little bit. I don't know. I, I look at him and I think he's a guy that's going to make the short throw, the check down. That's going to be very good for Nebraska. The question is, can he get the ball over the top and make contact with those wide receivers? I know he struggled in the spring. I've already done a little better in the fall, but that's going to be the big thing. Can he get somebody deep? Because I know the short passing, he'll be fine. So Tanner Lee, the starter at quarterback for Nebraska, but as for the position lining up alongside Lee in the Big Red backfield throughout fall camp, no front runner has emerged at the I back spot. As of now, the Huskers are using a four-man rotation between Devon Zigbo, Trey Bryant, Mikhail Wilbon, and even former Bellevue West T-Bird Jalen Bradley. Michael, both Mike Riley and Danny Langsdorf have expressed they wanted a back to break out from the group. Who do you think that will be? My wife is a therapist, clinical therapist, and. Um, there are certain things you do when you're in a position as a coach to make sure everybody stays motivated. Trey Bryant's a starter. I mean, come on, seriously. Trey Bryant's a starter. <laughs> Trey Bryant's going to take the first snap. Trey Bryant's going to get the majority of the carries as long as he's healthy. That's what he's doing. That's what he'll be doing. I think it's just more of just trying to keep Divine Zigbo there, Mikhail Wibon di dialed in, Jalen Bradley for whenever they need him. But this is Trey Bryant's team, and I believe he's the guy that's the most care. Sam, do you agree? Is Trey the starter for Nebraska as well? I think Trey is the starter. I do think that they want to have more than one guy who can be versatile. Uh, so they want to be able to put Mikhail Wilbon in a game and uh, be able to not be, you know, uh, predictable. predictable. Yeah, and, and I think you have to be able to put a guy in a game and, and know that maybe he can pass block and not mm -hmm. just catch a pass. Um, same way with Divine Ozigbo. We know that Divine can catch the ball. Um, can he run an outside zone? Can he run a toss play? I think you want guys that can do multiple things. And as a result, I think Trey is probably the most versatile. But I think in some ways, Mikhail's the best runner. And I think in some ways, Devine has the best hands. And then you've got Jalen Bradley, and you got to think if they're going to play him, they're going to give him a real chance and not just put him on special teams. Real quick, fascinating thing about it, and Sam's been covering the team for a long time, there's always a guy who the media really loves, all the way back to Chris Brooks in the late 2000s. <laughs> we love that guy. He didn't get the place to play. Mikhail Wibon's that guy. Everybody in the media has seen him in practice, make the one-handed catch, make guys miss, and we all love him. Will he ever play? Chris Brooks never did. I don't know. <laughs> so you are a believer in him. I think I, yeah, I love him. I think I would personally, I would start it. But I think it's Trey Bryant's job. He's the younger guy. They showed last year they can commit to him, that they'll, they'll allow him to get carries. I think he's the number one guy. For me, I love the way McKill bump, and he's going to make guys miss in the backfield, and I think you're going to have to with this offensive line, in my opinion. All right, moving to the outside now. Three of Nebraska's top four receivers from a year ago, no longer in Lincoln, but the Huskers do get back their second leading wideout from last season in Stanley Morgan Jr. So Morgan, along with senior DeMornay Pearsonell, proven commodities for NU, but there will be plenty of new faces for the Huskers at this position. 
So Sam, who do you think will step up at the wideout spot for Nebraska in 2017? Stanley Morgan, Demorne Pearsonell, and J.D. Spielman. I think Spielman is a guy that could have played last year. He didn't play because they redshirted him. I'm not sure that was necessarily the best decision. Spielman has some Amir Abdullah qualities to him. He's tough. He's kind of a smaller guy, but he can stretch the field vertically. I think you can use him on a jet sweep. You can do a lot of things with JD. Those are your top three. And then after that, it's kind of the it's kind of the walk-on br brigade and Tyjon Lindsay. Tyjon mm -hmm. Lindsay to me is like a special guest star. He's a guy that you want to use three or four times a game, isolate him in space, try to get a big play with him. I don't think he knows the entire route tree. And then you've got Brian Reimers, Gabe Ron, Brett Clausen, Connor Young. Those are sort of your walk-ons. And then when Keyan Williams comes back, he'll be in the mix too, but we don't know when he's going to come back. It's not the best unit they've ever had. Yeah. This isn't 2013 Kenny Bell and Quincy Anunwa, but it's decent. All right, Michael, besides Spielman, anybody else stand out to you that you think could stand out this year? I think, as I said earlier with Tanner Lee, the key is to be able to get deep. Uh, I think people are going to start realizing that he likes to check the ball down. They're going to close down a little bit with their safeties and try to stop the run. To get over the top, it's Tyjon Lindsay. I think that's the guy with the speed that can get over the top. I, I loved um, last year Spielman. I wanted to see him play, get him just to play. But I think Tyjon Lindsay is a huge key to get those splash plays when you're coming off that hard play action. And Tanner Lee's going to be very good at the play action, especially from under center. And you can get that guy down the field. That's why he's a flanker. That's why he's outside. He's not a slot receiver. He knows his size. He's an outside guy because he's got top end speed. And along the offensive unit, arguably the biggest question mark for Nebraska heading into 2017 is the offensive line. And here's how Mike Cavanaugh's starting group looks right now. David Neville at right tackle, Tanner Farmer next to him at guard, Cole Conrad in the middle at center, Gerald Foster at left guard, and Nick Gates anchoring the unit at left tackle. Michael, after struggling to end the season last year, do you think there will be big improvements from the O-line this season? And how crucial of a year is this for Mike Cavanaugh? I'm not from Missouri, but you're really going to have to show me. I, I want to see this offensive this line. Got jealous. I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> you, I want to see it. I wanna, he coached at Hawaii, Mac, Mac Cavanaugh. I want to call him Matt Cavanaugh. But Coach Cavanaugh did. And then he went to Oregon State. And yeah, he was good. Don't get me wrong. But I want to see guys produced in the NFL. And he didn't necessarily do that. These guys have to be able to equally run block against Big Ten defenses and be able to protect Tanner Lee when he's standing back there exposed. It didn't happen against Tulane, with Tulane. I hope it happens here because this is a guy who's been hurt. He hasn't finished a season yet in his two years. I want to see him finish the season. In order for that to happen, this offensive line is going to have to pass pro better. Sam, do you expect improvements from the O-line this year? I actually do. I think that the, the pass protection is going to be better. I think Mike Cavanaugh knows how to teach that really well. Um, I think that uh, they're, they're more seasoned and more cohesive as a group. You've got four fourth-year juniors and one fifth-year senior, and they actually have depth this year. Even though some of the guys like Matt Farniak and Bo Wilson and John Raritan and even Brendan Hymas may not necessarily start at any point this season, if somebody gets hurt like they had last season, they actually have some decent backups who can come in the game. Nick Gates was struggling for half the season with an ankle injury. You had other guys hobbling around. This year, if somebody gets hurt, they can actually bring in a quality backup, and I think that's important. All right, we're just kicking things off here. Still to come on the OSI Big Red Now special, we switch over to the other side of the ball and break down Bob Diaco's new 3-4 defense. Stay with us.